If you own an AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPU, especially a high performance 3D vCache model like the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, there's a devastating wallet burning problem that you need to know about. Now you might remember the initial CPU frying crisis that swept through the AM5 platform months ago. That issue, which primarily affected ASUS and Gigabyte boards, was seemingly fixed with crucial BIOS updates that enforced new, safer voltage limits. The headlines faded and the dust settled, but now, months later, the problem seems to be back. New cases of catastrophic CPU failure have emerged, this time centered squarely on ASRock AM5 motherboards. We're talking about an expensive Ryzen 7 7800X3D that died with visible burn marks on the socket, melted CPU pads, and a total loss of hardware. The immediate smoking gun in that particular case was an outdated BIOS, months if not a year behind the essential safety fixes. That alone is a major concern. However, while most of the recent AM5 failure drama has centered on the newer 9000X3D chips, this 7800X3D case confirms that the original, deadly voltage vulnerability persists on older ASRock firmware. Now, what is truly alarming is that this is not just an unupdated BIOS problem anymore. Reddit users are reporting their CPUs failed even when running the more recently released BIOS versions too. This clearly indicates that while ASRock have been working on a fix, the issue is not fully resolved, and well, we now have a new problem to solve. The motherboard, the very foundation of your PC, might be operating outside of safe specifications, creating a potential time bomb that can destroy your processor. That is obviously something that nobody wants. Now, I want to stress that this is not only an ASRock specific issue, but it does seem to disproportionately affect the high performance X3D CPUs on that brand of hardware. So let's dive into exactly what's happening, and most importantly, how you can hopefully prevent it from happening to you. Now, we'll warn you that this is going to be more of a kind of talking head kind of video. So grab a drink, sit back and follow along with the developments, as there's quite a bit to go through. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Doc, you gotta help me. I, I can't land a single shot. 1080p, 30 hertz. Andy, I'm afraid you're suffering from a severe case of suboptimal hardware. What? What you need is the Philips Evnia 27M2N8500. 1440p, 360 hertz, display HDR true black 400, lightning fast 0.03 millisecond response time, and a true 10 bit QD OLED display. You'll be popping headshots in no time. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, let's see how I do. This might be terminal. Next level gaming with Philips Evnia, skill not included. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Now to understand the specific nature of the ASRock failure, we have to look closely at AMD's AM5 platform. When it was released in late 2022, AM5 represented a massive technological leap for desktop computing, bringing with it the powerful Zen 4 architecture, the new ecosystem of DDR5 memory, and a wealth of new processors. It introduced a higher density socket too, and fundamentally changed how the CPU and motherboard communicate power. Now, as we know, every huge technological jump comes with growing pains, and for AM5, that pain has consistently been centered on the delicate balance of power delivery and aggressive voltage control. A major part of these issues seems to focus on the performance-orientated Ryzen 7000X3D lineup, chips like the 7800X3D, 7900X3D, and the 7950X3D. Now, these processors feature AMD's revolutionary 3D vCache technology, which for those who don't know, is essentially an extra block of super fast L3 cache that's physically stacked on top of one of the core compute dies. This stacking is nothing short of incredible for boosting gaming performance, leading to the chips being highly coveted by PC gaming enthusiasts globally. However, the very nature of this stacking and mounting an extra piece of silicon directly on the core makes the chip extremely sensitive to heat and critically voltage. Unlike a standard CPU where the vCore voltage primarily dictates performance and heat, the 3D vCache stack relies heavily on the system on chip or VSOC voltage. This rail is, well, distinct from the vCore and it powers the non-core parts of the processor, including the integrated memory controller and the integrated graphics. In short, its stability is essential for the health of the delicate cache stack, and as the cache is stacked on top of the main die, this makes it less efficient at dissipating heat than the main cores, meaning any over-voltage in the area that it controls leads to rapid and irreversible damage. 
The silicon stack is delicate and has strict manufacturer imposed voltage limits. If the VSOC voltage exceeds a certain threshold, the tiny complex layer of silicon will experience accelerated degradation, overheat exponentially, and eventually, well, the CPU will fail catastrophically. This is what leads to the visible physical damage with the burn marks of the processor pads and the scorched plastic on the motherboard socket itself. Now, early in the platform's life cycle, AMD identified the risk and established a hard safety standard for the industry. The safe maximum VSOC voltage was eventually standardized and hard-coded via the new Agessa firmware to 1.3 volts. Anything higher was and is considered highly dangerous for long-term longevity, even if a component can temporarily withstand it. This 1.3 volt limit is the critical specification that motherboard manufacturers are required to respect. Now, the initial frying crisis swept through the AM5 ecosystem, primarily affecting early adopter boards from ASUS and Gigabyte. The problem was largely traced back to their aggressive auto-tuning during the process of memory training. Basically, when users enabled Expo for overclocking their high-speed DDR5 memory, the motherboard's firmware would automatically apply dangerously high VSOC voltages in a kind of effort to guarantee memory stability at those high speeds during the boot and training sequence. The voltages were sometimes seen spiking well over the 1.3 volt limit, creating the time bombs that ultimately led to the first wave, wave of deaths. The community uproar was massive, and it required direct intervention from AMD, who then pushed a new firmware code to all motherboard partners. This code was designed to enforce the 1.3 volt limit at a fundamental level, forcing all manufacturers to comply and hopefully eliminating the dangerous behavior. Fortunately, many BIOS updates for those manufacturers have largely resolved the original overvolt issue, bringing a degree of stability back to the problem. However, the AM5 platform still seems to have deeper issues lurking beneath the surface. While the initial VSOC overvoltage was solved, the most recent surge in failures suggests the problems are either recurring or have evolved. And the spotlight is now firmly on ASRock boards, which are experiencing these dramatic failures with users reporting issues even on recently updated firmware. The technical difference in this new wave is that the blame is actually shifting away from simple Expo overvolting and more towards the complex precision boost overdrive settings and internal current limits, which is where the current investigation is centered. The fact that the issue is appearing in different ways across different boards months apart highlights the enduring challenge of power delivery control on this sensitive platform, making the situation far more complicated to resolve than the initial relatively straightforward voltage cap fix. The problem essentially moved from a high voltage issue to an overcurrent issue, and that's also much harder to replicate. Now, the initial crisis felt largely solved with the widespread Agessa updates, yet the new reports prove that the dangerous flaws in power delivery never truly went away. They just laid dormant. A user running a Ryzen 7 7800X3D recently became the latest casualty of this issue. They were either unaware of the risks or just chose to ignore the warnings, and their system was running on the pre-installed BIOS, which dated back over a year. This is actually a scenario that many users will fall into. If your PC is stable, if it's working fine, you think, why risk a BIOS update? It's a common sentiment with a, if it's not broken, don't fix it mentality. However, in this generation of motherboards, particularly the AM5 platform with its voltage sensitivity, BIOS updates are not just about hardware compatibility, they're actually crucial stability and reliability fixes that enforce crucial safety features. Just recently, we saw new reports from Unico's hardware clearly showing physical damage on such a system. The burn marks are the undeniable telltale signs of excessive electrical power and heat delivery at the socket. While much of the recent drama is centered on the new Horizon 9000 X3D series, this failure on a 7800X3D confirms that the deadly VSOC vulnerability persists on older ASRock hardware. Waiting to, I guess, strike any user who's not updated, no matter the CPU. And this also extends beyond X3D parts too, as reports of 9600X and 9700Xs have previously been affected. In the previous widespread failures on other brands, the culprit was almost always traceable to the user enabling Expo, which then triggered a dangerous VSOC voltage spike. The fix was relatively straightforward. Just enforce a hard cap of 1.3 volts on the VSOC and away you go. However, the reports on ASRock boards running more recent BIOS versions, such as 3.40, suggest a new or evolved problem. The issue doesn't appear to be a simple VSOC overvoltage, but rather overly aggressive precision boost overdrive settings. And this just changes the narrative and makes the warning even more urgent. 
Initial reports of the failures, especially those linked to the Ryzen 9000 series, were met with some resistance, with ASRock initially just dismissing user claims as misinformation or blaming memory incompatibility. It was only after independent investigations showed that a high number of failures concentrated on ASRock boards, which in turn made the manufacturer finally acknowledge the fault. Now, ASRock's motherboard team reportedly attributed the premature failures to their initial PBO presets being set too aggressively, specifically on their mid-range and high-end boards. This is a, an amperage problem that relates to the EDC and TDC. These current limits are part of PBO and kind of part of how it dictates how much electrical power the motherboard will allow the CPU to draw under heavy load. And well, ASRock reportedly configured these limits far too high in some of their early firmware releases. This aggressive configuration then pushed the CPU's integrated silicon health monitor beyond its safety threshold. And the problem here is actually quite subtle when you look at it. ASRock claimed that their initial EDC and TDC values were within the specifications provided by AMD, and this shifted the blame game slightly. ASRock's stance implies that while their settings were aggressive, the chips themselves failed to protect against the current draw that AMD specified was, I guess, permissible. This suggests that either AMD's internal specifications were flawed or ASRock was simply pushing the limits much harder than competitors. Regardless, the aggressive settings pushed the CPU to an early grave, even if the user never manually adjusted a voltage setting. It suggests that on some of these boards, simply running your system in a standard stock configuration could actually expose you to the risk of CPU damage due to excessive current being fed to the processor. Basically, you don't need to be an overclocker to be at risk. And while the response from ASRock support to affected users has been immediately to, well, initiate an RMA, which is good to see that they are taking the issue now seriously and offering to cover damaged motherboards. They have also since released subsequent BIOS updates, notably versions 3.25 and more recently 3.50, which reportedly contain further optimizations to PBO, reducing the EDC and TDC limits and adjusting hidden or shadow voltages to resolve this latest current kind of issue. Now, the real takeaway here is a community warning that followed. Whether you are on a year-old BIOS or a recent one, the AM5 platform on ASRock hardware still requires users to pay close attention to updates and possibly even manual voltage checks. The instability is real, the problem is complex, and the potential for total hardware loss is still too high to ignore. So, if you're in this situation, what should you do? Well, it's clear to say that the threat is real. While the issue may not be affecting everyone, the potential for total hardware loss means the solution must be immediate and foolproof. You need to verify if your system's at risk, and if it is, apply the necessary updates immediately. The reality is that while a lot of the community are knowledgeable about BIOS updates, not everyone is. There's still plenty of users out there who wouldn't know where to start, especially first-time builders who, I don't know, maybe chose an ASRock board due to their aggressive pricing, making it an easy and cheaper way to get onto the latest hardware compared to the competition. So if that is you and you're worried, there are actually a few things you need to do to put you and your system on the best footing. Now, the first step is to identify and verify your risk. If you have an ASRock AM5 motherboard with any of the sensitive X3D processors, and even actually beyond that, you need to update your BIOS. To check your current version, reboot your system, hit the delete key, enter the BIOS menu, and the version number, such as P1.10 or 3.50, will be clearly displayed on the main screen. Once you have this number, cross-reference it with ASRock's official support page for your specific motherboard, and then look at the BIOS download list. If your installed version is a year or even more older than the latest one, you're likely running the vulnerable firmware. For example, recent reports cited version 3.50 or later as the safe recommended version for many of their boards. Now, a BIOS flash isn't a difficult process, but it must be done carefully because if the process is interrupted, it can actually lead to other problems, such as permanently damaging your motherboard. Start by backing up any critical data, just in case anything happens to your system. Then next, download the absolute latest official BIOS from this support page, specific for your exact motherboard. Once downloaded, unzip the file and place it on the root directory of a clean FAT32 formatted USB drive. And then the last step is in preparation, a pretty crucial one. It may sound silly, but I have seen it happen. Do not flash your BIOS during a thunderstorm or a known power instability risk. A power cut during the flash will brick your motherboard. So if you have one, using an uninterruptible power supply or UPS is highly recommended. But I guess not everyone's got that. So just make sure everything is as it should be. 
Now to initiate the update, reboot your system, enter the BIOS, find the built-in flash utility, which is in the tools section, select the BIOS file on your USB drive, and then verify the file, and it will display the old and new version numbers just for extra confirmation. Once you confirm the update, it's absolutely essential that you do not touch the PC until it's fully rebooted twice and landed back on the desktop or the BIOS screen. This process may take several minutes to complete, so patience is key, but once the process is finished, your motherboard will contain the latest to guess a microcode with the mandatory hard-coded safety limits that should, in theory, prevent the VSOC from exceeding the dangerous threshold, effectively neutralizing the time bomb. Once complete, your motherboard firmware will contain that latest code and everything should be okay. But we never know. <laughs> and that's kind of the biggest problem. Hopefully this is all that is needed to protect your hardware as nobody wants to see their CPU or motherboard go up in smoke. But it is better to take these steps now to protect it rather than having the inconvenience of the RMA process and obviously a PC that just doesn't work. Of course, even if you are on a different brand of motherboard with a different CPU, if you've not updated your BIOS in a long time or ever, it couldn't hurt to give it a check over now. It's not as scary a process as it is often maybe made out to be and could actually save you a lot of hassle in the future. So yeah, hopefully that fixes it, but who knows what the future holds? Because as I mentioned, this has gone quiet and now it started ramping back up again. So I don't know, maybe we'll hear some more official information from either AMD or ASRock. So that brings us to the end of the current story on the AM5 platform, though I'm sure this isn't the end of it. And the dust, like I said, will settle again until another user takes to Reddit to post about their latest issue. And this will all just get churned up again. Overall, the core takeaway is simple. Whether the culprit is a failure to properly limit VSOC on older firmware or overly aggressive current settings like EDC and TDC on newer versions, the result is the same. Catastrophic failure of your expensive processor. And this makes your motherboard well, a genuine threat to your CPU. Now remember, while this is focused on ASRock at the moment, this is not just an ASRock problem. They are clearly at the center of the current failures, particularly on the 7000X3D and the newer 9000X3D chips, though others have been affected too. While ASRock has released multiple updates to adjust PBO parameters and shadow voltages, the fact that reports are still trickling in means that the issue is not completely solved, or that some chips may have actually suffered irreparable damage already which then opens things up even wider. The uncertainty surrounding the issue is frustrating. The problem has proved elusive to reproduce, but the fact remains that a critical mass of users are suffering. And well, I guess the best defense against this kind of invisible threat is diligence. If you own one of these affected motherboards, you must update your BIOS. And if you're comfortable, perform a manual VSOC safety check. It's not just about gaining performance or compatibility, it's about providing mandatory hard-coded safety limits to stop your system from destroying itself. Don't be the user who thinks, if it's not broken, don't fix it. In this case, an outdated BIOS is a literal time bomb. So update now, confirm your voltages are safe, and protect your hardware as, well, currently, it's the only way to be sure. So there we have it. Hopefully you're not one of the ones who have been affected. If you are, let us know in the comments section below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, you can help support us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of cool goodies, including behind the scenes content, Patreon specific live streams, of which we have a new one coming very soon, bi-weekly uh, game nights, a super kind of special area over on our Discord, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.